Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and M Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, a transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. Mr. Hightower, how are you this morning? Fine, fine, thank you. Hello, Matt. Why, well, hello, Kitty. What are you doing in here this time of day? Uh, just looking for a little shelter. What? <laughs> From his son. Oh. Yeah, I figure I can keep the peace in here as well as out there in that heat. Well, you're that lazy. We better go sit down. Yeah, you know that's a good idea. Oh, there's a table over there next to Olive and Kate. Oh, okay. Say, uh, huh? who's the old man they're sitting with? Well, I don't know. He came in just for you did. Hey, Kitty. Huh? Kitty, you're missing all the fun. I don't hear your friend laughing. Oh, he's crazy. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Olive. Okay. Marshal, sit down. Uh, no, no, thanks, Kate. Oh, We're come sit on, Marshal, Kitty. Uh, shall we, Kitty? Okay. Kitty, you got to hear this. What'd you say your name is, old man? Well, I ain't so old. Uh, my name is Nip Colors. Nip Colors? <laughs> I, ain't a, I, I ain't a day over 60. Or a day under. <laughs> Tell me, how come you never been to Dodge before? Well, I only just bought me a ranch down on Crooked Creek. What's that got to do with it? I ain't never been in Kansas before. I made my money mining out in Arizona. I'm I'm rich now. My ma died. You mean your wife? No, no. Ma, my, my mama. Mama, she was real old. She kind of crippled up, but she died, and now I can get married. You mean that a man your age has never been married? I was, but she died a long time ago. You have any kids? Some. But they all run off soon as they got big enough. <laughs> now, this is kind of sad, Matt. Yeah. So you come to Dodge looking for a wife, huh? Yeah, I'm going to find me one, too. What makes you think you're going to find one here? Well, there's women here. I figured I'd look them over. And take your pick. Well, how else? Listen, there isn't enough gold in the world to get me to marry an old, ugly coot like you. Me either. You're about as romantic as a turkey buzzard. <laughs> Why, I've seen water dogs I'd sooner cuddle. <laughs> I wouldn't get any closer to you than I am now to save me from hanging. Olive, that's me. Well, look at him. Oh, he can't help it. I mean, you don't have to talk to him like that. He's an old fool. He isn't doing you any harm, Kate. No, no. I don't mean to do no harm, but I've got to find a wife. You don't need a wife. You need a bell around your neck and one leg tied up. <laughs> I've had enough of this. Not kidding. I'll handle this. Olive, you and Kate get out of here and leave him alone. What? You heard me. Get out, both of you. Since when did you start running things around here? 
You ever see me fight? Kitty, will you take it easy? You girls will look like scarecrows when I'm done with you. You're first, Olive. Get up. Oh. <laughs> look, I, I don't want any trouble with you, Kitty. Then get away from this table. I'm, I'm going. You too, Kate. Sure. We don't want to talk to him anyway. You got to excuse him, mister. They learn all that talk from the cowboys and such that come in here. Uh, they said that uh, your name is Kitty? Yeah, that's right. Well, you're very nice, Kitty. Oh, sometimes a woman can handle women better than a man can. But you're pretty, too. Yeah. Well, you better stay out of here, Nip. Go look for a wife someplace else. Well, I, I don't have to. What? Not now. I found one. You have? You. Me? Sure. I didn't want either of them to. I was just <laughs> looking them over, but I like you fine. You make a good wife. Now, look, Nip. Don't you go getting any ideas. It's okay, Kitty. I'll take care of everything. I'll be I... back in a few days. Well, wait, I... We'll get married then. Ma? <laughs> Oh, well, well, Kitty, and it looks like you got yourself into something, doesn't it? Try to be nice to somebody. Try to do a good deed. And see what happens. Oh, well, I I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe maybe you'll forget about it. You think so? No. Oh, well, what am I going to do? Why don't you marry him, Kitty? You ever see me fight? <laughs> no, Kitty. This is it, L and M filters. It stands out from all the rest. Miracle tip, much more flavor. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior filtration, superior taste, superior filtration because of L&M's superior filter. White, all white, pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light, and mild. No doubt about it, L&M is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. stage come in, Mr. Dillon. Oh? No, didn't you think it would, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. Sure, I... I knew it would. It was awful late, though. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yes, sir, it was late. Oh, well, why? Well, I declare I don't know. I... I didn't bother to ask. Oh, oh I see, I see. Uh, well, what else is new, Chester? Well, sir... Nothing I know of. You know, Chester, you ought to stay in the office more and keep out of the sun. Oh, well, the sun's already went down, Mr. Jones. Well, now, that's something new. I hadn't noticed that. Well, yes, sir, you're right. It has. Well, yes, sir, it sure has. <laughs> Matt. Oh, hello, Kitty. Come on in. Even Miss Kitty. Chester. Matt, you got to do something. What? Well, what's the trouble? That Nip Colors is back. Well, say, I want to get a look at him. Yeah, well, you will, Chester. He's back already, huh? 
It's been three days, and he's sure been busy. Well, what do you mean? Well, first he's gone and bought a lot of new clothes. Got himself all doed it up. Well, he needed it. Well, that's not the point. They're wedding clothes. Oh? He came into the Long Branch wearing them. He's over there now buying drinks for the house. Celebrating. I nearly died of shame, Matt. Everybody laughing at him and at me. I left. I got out. Well, that's funny, Kitty. I, I'd have thought you'd have got mad or laughed it off yourself. Matt, he's serious. I don't know how to stop him. And what's more, I am mad now. That's why I came here. Oh. I ran into the preacher on the street. And you know what he said? He's real pleased he's going to marry me and nip colors tomorrow. That old fool's gone and set up a wedding. Oh, my goodness. It's got to oh. stop. It's got to stop, Matt. You've got to help me. Well, Kitty, please. I... Please, Matt. Oh, sure, Kitty. Of course I will. Uh, I'll go over there now and see what I can do. Well, I'm going with you. Well, you don't have to, Kitty. I want to. Bar, talking to Olive. Yeah. Now maybe he's changed his mind. I doubt it. Now look at that beaver hat. <laughs> he must be rich. Matt, he's crazy. He's awful crazy. Oh. Easy now, Kitty. It's going to be all right. Hey, Kitty. Oh, no. Kitty. Hey, shut up some drinks, bartender. Uh, Sam. No, never mind. Well, what? What? Oh, you're the marshal, ain't you? Yeah, that's right. You come to the wedding, too, marshal. Uh, everybody's invited. Yeah, I'm going. I wouldn't miss it for nothing. You'll miss the next two days if you don't shut up, Olive. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, uh, colors. Kitty says that she doesn't want to marry you. Yeah, she told me that, too. Do you know how women are, Marshal? Kind of bashful, like. <laughs> Ollie! <clears throat> Kitty isn't a bashful woman, Colors. She doesn't want to marry you. Now, can't you understand that? But, uh, she can't back out now. Oh, for mercy's sake. It's no use talking to her, I Matt. better have me a wife, and I decided on her. That's how it's going to be. And I'm coming by for her noon tomorrow, and we're going to get church. You come by at noon tomorrow or any other time, and I'm going to be waiting with a shotgun to blow your head off, and I mean it. I think she does. Well, no, uh, that ain't no way to talk, Kitty. All right, colors, the talking's over. What? You get out of town or I'm going to lock you up. Lock me up? In jail, and you'll stay there till you're ready to quit bothering people. Well, now, whoever heard of going to jail for wanting to get married? You see... I'm not going to argue with you, colors. Now, you take your choice right now. You're the meanest marshal I ever met. I, I, I just ain't going to jail. All right, colors, come on. No, let me go now. I'll, I'll leave. I don't want to go to jail. All right, then get out. Well, I'm going. But I'll be back, Kitty. You'll see. And I'll be waiting with a shotgun. <laughs> oh, Kitty. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> you let me know if he does come back, huh, Kitty? You'll know. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh, oh. oh I'm kind of tired tonight. <clears throat> well, it was a good dinner, though. <laughs> turkey and chocolate size. Well, can you imagine that turkey? And chocolate? <laughs> doc. Yeah. Uh huh. Hey, Doc. What? 
Over here. Oh. <laughs> I didn't see you standing there, Matt. Well, I don't like standing in the light very much. Oh, no, I don't blame you. Oh, where you been, on a call? No, I had a late supper. I was busy until, oh, after 10 o'clock tonight. No? I was over at Delmonico's? No, I wasn't. I went to that new Mexican place. I had some of their turkey and chocolate sauce. <laughs> Say, you tried that? Yeah, it's good, too. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I'll turn in now. Okay. Wait a minute, Doc. Why, it's Chester. Mr. Dillon, you better come too, Doc. Uh, what's the trouble, Chester? Out back the stable. Old Nip Colors, he's been shot. What? Yes, sir. With a shotgun. <laughs> Well, Doc, how does he look? Oh, he looks like a Virginia ham just sprinkled with cloves. Well, now, that's no way for a doctor to talk. I've been shot. It isn't my talk you should be worrying about. It's whether I can dig all those pellets out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's going to be quite a task. Yes, sir, it's going to be quite a task. Well, why don't you get started? Before I die, well, die. Oh, be quiet. You better get him up to my office, Matt. I'll need better light than that lantern of Chester's. Thing. Well, one lantern's all I can get, Doc. You know, I ain't in the habit of carrying more than half a dozen around with me. Never mind, Chester. Uh, Excuse me, Doc. Would you let me get on there, please? Uh, yes. Colors, what happened? Who shot you? Hey, you got gall asking a dying man foolish questions? Doc doesn't think you're going to die, Colors. Now tell me, did you hear or see anybody? Uh, how could I see who shot me in the back? I mean before that or, or after that. I didn't care after. I just lay here hoping they wouldn't pepper me again. And before it happened? I didn't see nobody. But I can tell you who it was. You heard her. It's Kitty. She said she was going to shoot me with a shotgun, too. Now, wait a minute. She said she'd shoot you if you came back bothering her, but that would just talk. Kitty wouldn't shoot anybody. No. Look at my back. Where'd the shot come from, Colors? Out there, by the water trough. Chester. Yes, sir? Bring that lantern, will you? Let's see what we can find over there. What, you mean you're going to leave us here in the dark? Well, it'll rest your eyes, Doc. You're going to need them. Come on, Chester. Hey, what if they're still around, Mr. Dillon? Want to take a shot at us? That's not us they're after, Chester. Here, hold that lantern down by the ground here where it's muddy, will you? Okay. Wait a minute. Hmm? No, back here, Chester. There. Look at that. Well, I do declare, Mr. Dillon, them is woman footprints. Yeah. Go ahead, Miss Kitty. Come on in, Kitty. What's this all about, Matt? Chester won't tell me a thing. Well, sit down and I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Must be serious to have me dragged away from work at midnight. Yes, it, it is, Kitty. It hasn't got something to do with old nipped colors again, has it? Have you heard anything? No. Well, what, Matt? He got shot. Got shot? About a half hour ago by a woman. She used a shotgun. You're thinking I did it. Well, you were talking about doing it, weren't you? I sure was. And you know something else? I went out to get some air about an hour ago. I took a walk. Alone. And I got back just before Chester came in. I don't even have an alibi. Yeah. So, as soon as the word gets around, there are going to be a lot of people thinking you did it. Sure. 
Olive was there, too. She heard you threaten him. Uh, she'll be real pleased to testify against me. Yeah. Kitty, uh, might be easier for you if you laid low till I find out who did this, huh? How do you know I didn't? Well, I don't know. Not that way. Not so as I could prove it legally. All right, Matt. I'll lay low. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, what is it, Chester? Somebody just went upstairs to dock. So? I seen her out the window here. Her? Yes, sir. It was some old woman. And she seemed like she was in an awful hurry. Thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day. To the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light, and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white, all white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M's superior tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try l and today. said the doctor brought him here. You mean Nip Colors? Where is he? Oh, Doc's working on him in the back room there. He got shot. I know he got shot. Here, now, wait a minute. Oh. You're the marshal, ain't you? Who is she, ma'am? We'd all like to know that. Who are you, ma'am? I'm Nettie Beecher. Now, let me go, Marshal. I've got to see him. He's not going to die. You sure? Well, I thought maybe you'd come to finish him off. Come to see him and tell him I'm sorry. I got mad when I said he was going to get married. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, were you engaged to him or something? Well, I thought I was. I've been with him 20 years, cleaning his house, cooking his food, raising his kids, nursing his old crippled ma. And all them years, he kept saying he'd get married again when his ma died. You thought he meant you? Well, who else would have him? Him and his crazy ways. I didn't believe it when he said some girl here was going to marry him. I didn't believe a word of it. Nettie, I'm the girl he was talking about. No, well, I'm right, ain't I? A girl like you marrying him? I told him no. If you didn't believe it, why did you shoot him? Oh, I didn't aim to kill him. I only wanted to hurt him some. But why? Because he never looked at me. Twenty years and he never once looked at me. But I'm sorry now. And that's why I'll come here. What's going on in here? I will tell you later, Doc. Right now, this lady would like to see colors. Can she come in? Well, does she have to? Yeah, she has to. All right, but you come with her. I don't want any trouble in there. There he is, lady. Mr. Colors. Nip. Well, what in tarnation are you doing here? Well, I'm sorry I've done it. Well, you done it? 
It is me. You shot me? Made me mad you're going off trying to marry some other woman. He made you mad? Why? After 20 years waiting, you ask me that? What? You've been waiting for me? Ever since I come to work for you. After your wife died. Why, you never told me that, Nettie. Ain't for a woman to speak up. Well, you sure never did. Till tonight. Oh, you sure spoke up tonight. There comes a time when a woman has to, Nip. Hold your tongue for 20 years and then blow me up with a shotgun? Well, you're quite a woman, Nettie. Funny. I never noticed that. You ain't looked at me in 20 years. I'm looking at you now. Uh, Doc. Hmm. Yes? There isn't going to be any trouble. No. Come on. Well, what happened? Oh, they're talking, Kitty. Well, of course they're talking. What about? <laughs> well, let's say that you just lost yourself a bridegroom. <sighs> well, I can't say I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know something, Mark? What? I lost him to a pretty good woman. <laughs> And now our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know what I like about L&M's is they're mild and mighty easy on the draw. When you get right down to it, no filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip for quality or effectiveness. Darn good smoke. See for yourself. l and M stands out from all the rest. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Michael Ann Barrett, and Virginia Gregg. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff, to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Remember, listen again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke, brought to you by L&M Filters. <laughs>